So I think I've seen a setup similar to this many years ago, but I've got no idea. I've completely forgotten how to do it. So, uh, so what is this? So this is a way of demonstrating Lissajou figures, L-I-S-S-A-J-O-U-S, uh, which were first uh, described in the 19th century using, uh, I believe, actual pendulums, which is really quite tricky. Um, it's much, much easier to do it electrically. Yeah. So all you need are two signal generators, preferably as identical as you can get, but it's not the end of the world if they're not. These are just two old ones that we've, uh, we don't use for much else. Yeah. And uh, an oscilloscope. Uh, no reason on the face of it why you can't use a digital one, um, but I find they can sometimes be a little bit tricky in certain situations, so I prefer to go a bit old school at this point. And the only other thing that matters is that it's got to have, uh, whatever sort of oscilloscope you use, it's got to have an XY mode uh, in, on this, uh, uh, CRO, it's a button. Sometimes it might be an extra setting on the time base, uh, maybe just beyond the longest time base setting. And so what does that do, this XY thing? Well, normally, uh, if I switch XY off and turn the time base down, normally, of course, uh, the X deflection or the X position of the dot on the screen is determined entirely by the CRO. The CRO sweeps the dot across the screen and then the voltage on one or other of the inputs is what makes the um, dot move up and down. So the Y deflection is, hand, uh, is determined by the inputs and the X position is determined by the time base. Yeah. As soon as you put it onto XY mode, all that happens now, the time base is now completely irrelevant. It's completely disconnected. Okay. And what happens now is that one of these inputs is determining the X position and one of them is determining the Y position. So let's see which one's which. Let's turn this signal generator up. So my top signal generator is deflecting the dot vertically as you can see. And that's just showing that uh, effectively the size of the amplitude there, or for effectively the voltage displayed, is a bit like the, the output on the signal yeah. generator. Exactly. It's as if you turn the time base off normally. Yeah. Um, so that's giving me uh, three squares, uh, whatever that might be. I think six volts, because it's two volts per division at the moment. Yeah. If I turn that one down and instead turn the lower signal generator up on XY mode, it now makes the dot move left to right. So it's almost as if you just um, turn the oscilloscope screen through 90 degrees. Yeah. Now, the fun comes when you put both of them on simultaneously. Now, at the moment, I've got them very slow so that you can see the individual um, oscillations, but we'll soon, uh, soon speed that up in a minute. So if I turn that one up, so it's got an amplitude of plus or mi plus and minus about three squares, and then turn this one up to be the same. Ooh, that's nice. It starts moving in the X and Y directions simultaneously. Now, to start with, it looks like a circle, and that's nice and lovely, but if we carry on watching it, we'll probably find that over time, it'll start to get more and more elliptical, and then it will eventually become a diagonal line. Now, if it were a diagonal line in that direction, that would simply mean that the two power supplies are absolutely in phase, because as this one goes that way, that one goes that way, and yeah. vice versa. So you'd get a uh, diagonal line like that. If they were 180 degrees out of phase with each other, they'd... Uh, it will be a diagonal line in the other direction. The fact that we're getting something that's mm, more or less a circle suggests that they are currently either 90 or 270 degrees out of phase. If I start uh, going to much higher frequencies, then uh, you'll get a much better feeling for the uh, shape. So instead of having it at one hertz, which is what each signal generator is at at the moment, if I set them both to one kilohertz, and just turn the amplitude down a little bit so that you can see it better on the screen, Oh, that's nice. You'll see that we've got... Oh, they're about out of phase, but they're, so they're coming different. into phase. Right now, they're in phase. And now they're going slightly out of phase again because with the dials as they are, I can't get them absolutely so the, perfect. So the frequencies are almost the same, but not quite perfect. Absolutely. So, which, and interestingly, according to the dials, they're not quite the same. Uh, you can see that the dials are not perfectly positioned. So this one looks to me like about 1.05 kilohertz, whereas yeah. this one looks pretty much bang on 1.00. Yeah, um, but I guess it's a bit of trial and error, you get it perfect if you have absolutely. to. Absolutely, absolutely. And then uh, once you've got that, uh, that's nice, and you can talk about uh, measuring phase. This is actually a very quick and easy way for electronic engineers to measure phase between two signals. It's actually easier to do it this way than um, sometimes it is to do it many other ways. So they do actually have a practical use. You can then start to try different ratios of frequencies. So if I make, um, if I turn one of these down to half a kilohertz, so I'll leave this one at one kilohertz and turn that one down to half a kilohertz. Oh, it's a bit tricky to f on this signal generator at least to get ex get it exactly right. But with a bit of trial and error, we can hopefully get it. There we go. Ooh, that's nice. 
So it looks like some kind of 3D shape moving. Yeah, the 3D movement is entirely within uh, your head. It's an entire optical illusion. It's not that I've invented a 3D CRO, <laughs> <Yeah>. fun though <laughs> that might be. Yeah. Um, it's entirely in your own head, and uh, you might, um, as they start to get quite hypnotic, um, you might be able to look at, as you continue to look at it, you might be able to convince yourself that it's turning one way, but then you might be able to convince yourself that it's actually turning the other, which just proves that it is a complete optical illusion. Um, the fact that we've got a loop that way uh, tells us which um, signal generator is running faster than the other, because if I swap them over, if I go from 0.5 and 1 kilohertz to the other way around, so I'll put that one back to 1 kilohertz, and then I'll turn the bottom one down to half a kilohertz, we'll get the same shape, but it's now flipped through 90 degrees. And to me, it looks like it's going clockwise. But, you know, that might look clockwise. Uh, if <laughs> you move your head in a particular way, you might... Oh, yeah, I've now managed to convince myself it's going the other way. Oh, no, it's anti-clockwise now. Yeah. yeah. Total Very optical cool. illusion. And you can try... Uh, you can then have hours of fun trying all sorts of different uh, ratios. Nice fractional ratios are good. If you, just, if you just randomly do it, you'll just get something like that, which might be... You might find aesthetically pleasant. Um, but it's uh, slightly more fun to get ones that are... Maybe a bit more like that. That's quite nice. And yeah. by counting the number of loops in each direction, uh, you can work out what the ratio is between these frequencies. Those, of course, there's no way of working out what the absolute values are. It's just purely forgetting ratios. So there you go. Listen to you figures. Beautiful.